Cry out to me with all of your heart and make me your greatest desire now, before the greatest storm of all time hits. A prophetic message from Jeff Byerly. The words that I speak to you now are more serious than any warning about any physical destruction or calamity that I could ever give you. The reason that I give you warnings about what is coming is so that you would hide yourself in me but how many have actually done this? Some like to think that they are prepared for every eventuality of disaster and calamity but you cannot buy protection, from what is coming, from Amazon, or Walmart. No matter how much you stock up it will not be enough if you don't know me. No matter what kind of fortress you build it will not withstand the shaking that is coming if you are not on the rock. I am the only shelter that will stand the coming storm. Every other refuge for you will be torn apart, smashed, scattered and then set on fire and utterly destroyed. Nothing that you see around you right now will survive what is coming. Only those whom have truly found their refuge in me will remain. They dwell in me and I in them. So I ask you this day, do you truly know me by the Spirit or do you only have head knowledge of me? Do you know all about me and have even studied my life and my word or do you know me intimately? Am I the greatest desire of your heart or are there many priorities in your life that come before me? Do you only speak of me in your public gatherings you call church, or do you meet with me in our private chamber? Are you truly born again of the Spirit or have you just repeated a prayer that meant nothing to you? Do you look at those who talk about me all of the time as annoying or fanatical or are you the one who can't help but speak about me, the greatest love of your life? Have old things truly passed away and have all things become new in your life or have you put on a facade that looks good on the outside but nothing has changed on the inside? Are there sins that you cannot lay down before me or do you feel terrible that you have hurt me when you sin? Do you think that I wink at those sins or do you seek the power of my spirit to overcome them? Do you believe that you and I have an understanding about your sin and that you do not need to humble yourself before me or do you confess it and repent? When you try to pray, worship or read the Bible do you feel that you would rather watch grass grow or paint dry or do you wish that you could do these three things all day long? Are there things that you do for me that I have not asked you to do but you do them because you rationalize in your mind that they are pleasing to me or do you seek my will to see what I would have you do? I know the answer to all of these questions and I want you to examine yourselves before me honestly let my spirit probe the depths of your heart and see what he will find. What he finds many times will be very ugly but I will take it away from you if you truly want me to. Many of you only know me externally but not internally. You have not truly invited me in to dine with you and fellowship with you and I am still standing at the door and knocking. Will you please let me in? I told the woman at the well that those that worship the Father must worship in spirit and in truth. This has always been true and still is. There are those who like to quote the verse, If you love me, keep my commandments, John 14 verse 15, and this is true. But if you only keep my commandments by keeping only the letter of the law, without being full of my spirit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, 
self-control and are in constant fellowship with me, you have failed. Love is the perfect fulfillment of the law. There is no other way to fulfill it no matter what you do. It is true, faith without works is dead but works without love is also dead. If you are full of my Holy Spirit you will fulfill my law. He leads you into all truth and my law is truth. My commandments are not hard to keep, in the spirit but in the flesh they are impossible to keep. That's why in the old covenant the blood of animals were required because no one could keep the law perfectly. Except I, the perfect lamb who was slain from before the foundation of the world. I did not do away with my law, I fulfilled it and made the way for all who would receive my spirit to fulfill it, through my one-time blood sacrifice for all who would accept it. You must abide with me, in the spirit, so that you do not fall back into sin and fleshly things. Without my spirit inside of you cannot, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Matthew 22 verses 37 to 39 I have done all of the work but you must die to yourself and give me all so that I might live through you by my spirit that lives within you. For as many as are led by my spirit, these are the children of God. I want you to know for sure that you know me and I know you. Cry out to me with all of your heart and make me your greatest desire now, before the greatest storm of all time hits. Instead of being blown, beaten, battered and afraid of every wave that comes at you, you will walk on water and command the raging sea to be still by the power of the Spirit that raised me from the dead, for he also dwells in you. Believe my words and you shall overcome this world for I have overcome it and I call you to as well. I never ask you to do anything that is impossible for in me all things are possible. Look up, the storm is upon you. Look up your redemption draws nigh. This is what I am trying to say to you, Jesus.